Hello everyone, my name is Bridget and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be analyzing the clothing worn by the women in the 1950s animated Cinderella film. Uh, Cinderella's dress, when we look at the silhouette and design of it, fits in best with the clothing of the 1740s, seeing as it has a very large voluminous skirt and puffed sleeves. However, in order to fit in better with the clothing of this time, the sleeves would be full length, the gown would be wider, and it would have a train. The longer sleeves would eliminate the need for the opera gloves that she wears in the film. It's also important to take into consideration the time period in which this film was made. Production began on this movie in 1948, shortly after the end of the Second World War. During this time, there were a lot of restrictions placed on fashion wasting details, such as pockets, pleats, and ruffles that had been put into effect during the war and were still in effect in most of Europe. Also during this time, Christian Dior released his new look line, which consisted of many ball gowns inspired by the French Second Empire, which was in the 1900s. Dior drew inspirations from this time period because while he was designing this collection, he was also working on another movie set in this time period. Dior described his ideal customers as flower-like women with round busts and voluminous skirts. Dior very well could have been describing any of the countless Disney princesses that followed Cinderella. Now let's move on from Cinderella and on to her stepsisters. I'm going to be analyzing their classic green and pink looks that we see on them from for most of the film. We are going to begin by looking at the silhouettes of the dresses in order to, ter to determine the time period. So when looking at these dresses, I can see that they fit in with the fashion from the late 1600s to early 1700s. A feature of these dresses was an extremely large bustle and lots of decoration. While the stepsisters' dresses certainly do have a very large bustle attached to the back, um, the decoration is almost non-existent. So in order for them to fit in with the clothing of this time period, their bodices would probably have a lot of heavy beading and embroidery, as would skirts. And again, the skirts would have a slight train. However, when we look at this time period, we can see why inspiration was drawn from it for the stepsisters looks. Um, the clothing from this time is extremely decorated and fancy as we discussed earlier and the stepsisters are known to be extremely egotistical and focusing mostly on outer appearances so a very ooh la la fancy schmancy time period would be very well suited for their characters and they would thrive in that sort of environment. Now it is time for the final analysis of today's video, Lady Tremaine. Looking at her clothing, we can see it has a very Victorian silhouette to it, which is correct. It was quite easy for me to find a time period in which Lady Tremaine's dresses fit, which is the 1880s. These dresses were very slim and rigid and angular in design, which we can see in Lady Tremaine's outfits. We usually only see her in variations of the same dress, in both purple and red, both colors that we associate with Disney villains. The specific style of dress that we see Lady Tremaine wearing in the film began development in 1883. And in this style, the bustle had returned, only it was very small, not very really noticeable, but still noticeable, and it came out from the small of the back. Another feature of these dresses was heavy decoration, such as beading, ruffles, Lace. You see some slight decoration on her dress in the brooch that she wears and in the ruffles along the neckline and the ankles, but that's about it. So again, in order for her to fit in to the clothing of the time period, her clothing would have a lot more decoration, more jewelry, more lace, ruffles, and her dress would have a train. If all of these dresses fit into a specific time period, how can the film be historically inaccurate? Well, you'd be right. Except this is supposed to be one film. We're not supposed to have people from the 1700s and the 1800s. No. It's supposed to be all cohesive. It's supposed to all fit together. And it doesn't. With, I 
do think that they got some things right although not in regards to historical accuracy like i mentioned earlier with the stepsisters those large floofy bouncy dresses with the large bustles do seem to fit with their character also with lady tremaine's dress the large slim rigid the slim rigid angular dress does fit well with her character being very strict and mean when it comes to cinderella and cinderella's dress while not being very historically accurate it is an iconic silver dress and it really captures the look of magic and yes the dress is silver modern girls made a really good video on this that i'll link down below and yeah thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this and learned something about fashion history in the process sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more history and fashion and style related content along with comment down below which um disney princess you would like me to analyze the clothing of next i do have a list that i'm working from but i'd be w more than willing to add your ideas onto it as well thank you all so much for watching i